y'all know it, just sing along with us. This is my word from God. Obedience to this word is the only weapon I have. If I read this word and do exactly as it says, according to the book of Joshua chapter number Can somebody say, I love my church. Oh, man. Glory to God. Thank you, Professor. We call him one in a million in the choir. Y'all don't know. Brother Young, thank you again for standing in the gap for us. Brother Brian, Brother Elijah, Sister Tiffany, Brother Patrick, y'all y'all good now. When you, when you can... You can back up Bobby Boo Bland and people like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Amen. Okay. I don't know. Is that is that me? Is that me clicking? Probably. I probably is me tonight. Uh, we will fix that. All right. Let's just pray a prayer here tonight together, if you don't mind. Would you just repeat after me? Say, Lord, I thank you. You love me enough to not let me go hungry. Because you feed me your word. I do realize that I've given all I can give. And you constantly supply me with the strength I need. So tonight, Lord, I'm asking you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can receive your word without any distractions. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Sit all the way down. Sit back and get as comfortable as you can. We have a word from God again tonight. I am so grateful to those of you who are still having Sunday leak throughs. Amen. Sometime it's just good to leak through after Sunday and just carry it on around with you on Monday. This is one of those Monday nights when it's the first Monday that the time, after the time changes. This is when people get used to driving at night in the daytime who are not necessarily used to it. There's a lot of different traffic issues and just the thought that you pushed through it, came through it, made it through it. I am grateful and very appreciative of you. Let me warn a lot of you in the natural, go ahead and stock up and stack up and drink up and eat up a lot of vitamin C because there are a lot of different things that go along with kids that are in and out of different temperatures. We got hot in the daytime, cold at night. So naturally your body's trying to fight off a lot of different things. So if you want to be like proactive, you know, I'm not any medical doctor by any means, but a lot of good orange juices and vitamin C's. I don't know why I'm talking about that tonight. Um, but I just, you know, I just don't want a lot of you uh, just having unnecessarily go through that little coughing scene, like that lady coughing over there. See, she coughing and going on. And so sometimes in church, you got to go, watch out, man. <laughs> no. So, so I just wanted to say that it had absolutely nothing to do with anything. Um, I'm, I'm just grateful to God for the smile on my face, and you can't take it away. All right. Uh, I, I wonder how many of you spent most of the day today getting yourself ready for tomorrow instead of spending a lot of your day today getting yourself ready to receive from God tonight. Sometimes it makes you just wonder how much time do we spend on us 
and we should really spend a lot more time with him. And that's what you're doing tonight. You're spending time with God, and I appreciate it. Um, everybody's everything on every Sunday morning. Our Sunday morning services here are uh, awesome. But, boy, I tell you, this Monday night just won't go away, and I'm grateful for that. Um, if you're here for the first time on Monday, all we do on Monday night is simplify the word of God. And we're going to do just that again tonight. Um, tomorrow night, I do want to say tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night. We're going to have leadership on Tuesday this week, not Wednesday. We would normally have it on Wednesday. So we're going to have it on Tuesday this week. Tuesday, so you get here tomorrow at 7.30. If you'd like to be a part of any other part of the ministry, even if there's a part of the ministry that we have not advertised, that we don't even know we have because it's sitting inside of you. Bring it. Bring your ministry and let us know what God is wanting us to do next. Amen. There are some things that we've already uh, established, but that doesn't mean that that's all. Amen. I think there are some, still some, some levels of grief ministry in this ministry, in this church that have to be established. There are some different levels of, of um, talking people through addictions and habits that still need to be established. In Women's Fellowship yesterday, we talked about uh, the, uh, the fact of how to live as a Christian in a world where everybody couples everything off. How do you live as a single uh, person, single woman in, in Christ, a single man in Christ? And when do you lose your identity uh, because you're constantly trying to give it to somebody else to try to fit in? And you don't, you know, there's a lot of different ministries that are being birthed. And I just thank God for that. So, so, so now something has happened here. We have never in the history, of, we've never done this before. We've never been here. We always have, when we have certain challenges or, or, or certain ways of helping others to get um, past one phase of Christianity to the other, we've gone through what we call a 90-day promise. And all that means is, Lord, every time, I promise you, every time I get a chance, I'm going to remember until this becomes not just something that I know about, but a habit, a habit, a habit. Is there anybody in here who you, you finally got the habit of brushing your teeth? Even if you got to make this up, raise your hand. I'm not, no, please, please, everybody, raise your hand. But you got, you're in the habit. You do it. It's just something you do. Okay. I, there are some people that I was looking at. You didn't put your hand up. I don't know what to do. I'm, you know. So anyway, so we, we start giving to God, and, and it becomes a wonderful habit because the results are great. Okay. And the more you give to God, the const, as constant as you are, you kind of go through. You prevent a preventative thing from spiritual cavity, and that's those things that kind of rot you out at the core, and you you, you can d deliver yourself uh, as God has already, deli already delivered you from a lot of animosity and anger and frustration. And it comes by watering. So we started with this plant, this bush, this whatever this was, this rose bush now, uh, 66 days ago. This is, y'all, this is day number 66. Boy, it's going fast. And then halfway through it, we stopped 30 days after we had been in this one and said, well, what would happen since we know now that God will give what we water into. What would happen if we set another seed and water something else? See, some of you are holding God down to just one thing. Okay, I got my job. I'm good. Gosh, there's so much more than that. So what we decided to do is put something, can, can something else grow from nothing? So 30 days ago, you know, it was like a transformation from the same faith that got us here. We started there and started watering. And some of you in, in this ministry right now in this room, you do. You, you qualify. You deserve to have a couple of things going on in your life. And that's where your overflow comes from. But then yesterday, you know, and we, another move we've never made before. We've never done this before. We just put up an, another one to say, now, I'm enjoying so much watching God take nothing and make something from it that I'm going to do it again. So some of you, you may have a couple of materialistic things. But what if one of the things you want to see God produce during this season is just more spiritual development? What if you want to sow a seed for somebody else who's just talking to you right now that they would talk more to God? Why? What's, what's wrong with just saying, Lord, I want something spiritual as well as something natural to manifest in my life? I was talking to one of my babies a minute ago. She said, I can't stop crying from yesterday. Ch child, that's called a breakthrough. You know how many people wish that they could just do that? I ain't talking about crying over no boyfriend and crying over nobody taking your car. You crying because everything is all right and you can't explain it. That's where we are tonight. 
So there's another one now. Maybe some of you started and said, Pastor, I wasn't here when y'all started the 90-day promise. And some of you say, well, I wasn't even 30 days. But yesterday I was here, or today I'd like to start. This is day two. Now this looks like it has no hope. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. That's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. Uh, amen. So, so, so can, we, can we go there for a minute? Yes. Amen. Do you know the person next to you? Do you know them well enough to keep them up tonight? Don't bother them if they don't want to be bothered. But if they want to be bothered, they just let them know. Next time you come to church, don't sit next to me. I'm a, I'm a noise bag. Hey, can I tell you something? There's something happening in your life right now if you are a sower of, of the seed or if you're giving to God. There's something that's happening in your life right now. Um, change is happening and some people are not aware of what's happening. And you can't explain what's happening. You just know that it is happening. You're going to have a challenge now. And the challenge is going to be after you start succeeding, after you start producing, after you start receiving a harvest. And hey, everybody online, thank you so much for being with us. I forgot to address you. This is Monday school. And um, I don't care. And please don't insult me. And don't insult your neighbor. Those of you that are here, <clears throat> don't, don't, do, don't insult the Holy, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Bye checking and asking what the score of the game is and all like that. You know, sometimes, no, really, don't laugh because sometimes that stuff is cute but sometimes that's very disrespectful. God is feeding your spirit and you're worrying about somebody else eating a hot dog or being at a football game. You know, nobody in this room likes football as much as I do, okay? I turned down several drafts just to be here tonight. <laughs> that was not the truth. I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. I just... But no, I, I want to teach us now because you can be such a fan that, that, that you're, you're, you can become ignorant to your spiritual development. So here's where you start to separate and start having respect, okay? And most people in church, we don't teach respect. We just kind of hint around about it. But I want to teach you. There's a way. So if you find yourself texting somebody or, or something about a game or anything that's not in this building, you know, just, just tell your flesh, no, stop. Stop. I have to listen to what God is saying to me. I got to focus on God, and then we'll be out by halftime. There, see, there's no way the Giants are going to beat Dallas. So, no, no, they're, they're, no. They're, if that happens, it, football is a fraud. There's no way. Right? Okay. Right. So, we don't, let's don't even go there. And let's don't even have that discussion anymore. And let's just be done with that. And, and they are not going to make me eat those words, but it's okay. All right, so you're a Christian. This is you. Boom, day two. This is you. Boom, day 66. I guarantee you if I had some people stand up in here tonight that you would say before you started looking like this, you really can remember looking like this. And I said yesterday in the message, I, I don't, some people tell you, honey, just forget that, forget that. I don't want to forget. I don't want, there are some things I don't want to forget because I know if, if I, and that's how some of us are, we forget when people do good things for us. Oh, now you got your own car, but you forgot when you used to dial people and call people. You have your own house now. You got your own heater, but you forgot. Maybe some of you forgot when you used to warm up in a blanket in somebody else's couch. And, and so you, you forgot when you were sitting all curled up, you and your children, or you by yourself, or you and your parents because you were the child. And you would pray, God, do something, do something. Now God is doing something, and now we are so busy, we're so consumed. I don't want to forget that. No, I don't want to forget having a church where we would come and we're just wondering sometimes, will we be put out of there? Because I was preaching revivals before I started pastoring, wondering, God, are they going to let us open the doors tonight? I don't want to forget that. Therefore, when I walk in here and see, uh, uh, I don't care if it's five or six of you, I'm just grateful to God. We know where the light switch is. We got some microphones. I don't trip on no musician not being here. Brother Mike's here, and I told the team a minute ago, I don't care who's here. Them ladies can sing. They just sing without it. I was watching Brother Leland tonight. He didn't even act like he had to me. You ever watch Brother Leland sing over there? He gets it. I can't do it. He go all up in here. I can't do it. I was watching him tonight. I was. I was just watching, buddy. We don't even have to have music. We can just push a tape recorder and just watch him. Just. Yeah. And so they've learned to say they don't have to have all of that. We love our music. We love our singers. But, boy, I was ready to just walk up in here tonight and say, okay, God, feed us. Right? 
And that's just that. And, and, and I want the spirit of God that I have and the excitement I have. I want it to be contagious. I'd rather you grab this than me grab what somebody else had. Because if you ever get it and you're going to say, now I understand it. I understand it, and I'm and okay, and I'm already gone. So, so if you were here, can I talk to you for a minute? If you were here, man, this is you. Look at you. But but you can still find something to complain about. I don't know how many hours I spent today at the doctor's office, and I'm just we're just looking. For, okay, what's going on? Sometimes you 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 look like the perfect. Uh, like you have a perfect bill of health, but there are things attacking your body. And so the thing we have to struggle with is when people ask us, how are you doing? And we have to say, it is well. I am blessed. Because that's what we constantly speak into existence. And then they're going to ask you, so what are you doing here today? And now you got to offer a complaint about something that's going on in your body while you're still believing that you're healed. So I want to talk to that person in here today who's standing straight up, slumped over. <laughs> you walking right with a limp. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me just tell you, because, because if you ever start to bear fruit, your branches get heavy. Some of you are complaining because things are getting rough. And Cedric, let me tell you why it gets heavy. Because once you start bearing fruit, the fruit alone weighs your branch down. And for some of you, you're not having any load because you ain't bearing no fruit yet. You wait till an apple gets on that tree. And you might need to be careful about who's drawn to you in this season of your life because some folk are drawn to you just to pick your fruit. And there are some folk that are throwing things at you just because you're bearing fruit. Are you with me? All right, let's get it on. So... In the Bible, there's a scripture that I want to remind you of. And, and again, we're here because it, you're going to always need encouragement during this 90-day this, this promise. And, and repeat after me. Just repeat after me. Say, not just 90, but beyond that. And see, that's the story. That's what's going to tell, that's what's going to tell the difference about who we are in here tonight. It's not just the 90, but it's beyond that. All right. So in Proverbs... It's speaking to those of you, and I got. I want to get out a little, little, just a little early, just a little early tonight, so we can go my leadership training tomorrow. We haven't had leadership training in, in a long time, so I just want to look at those who are leaders of our church and look at you in the face and say, "I love you and I bless you and I thank God for you," because you do so much that people don't uh, understand. And sometimes it's just enough to say, "Hey, let's just come together and love on each other," and and then we can continue to move forward. So. If you are a person in this room and you're a righteous person in God, I'm just, boy, I'm just glad to be alive tonight. You know, I have to take little pauses like that. Uh, little pauses like that. Amen. Amen. All right. If you're a righteous person, see, one of the misconceptions is those of us that are living right for the Lord and trying every day to live for the Lord. The misconception is we don't get beat up, we don't get jumped on, we don't get all of that. In a few days, you're going to hear us start to talk about something called Rick Keys. Okay, Rick Keys, this is a cute play on the word that said there are keys that the Lord has given me through the years. And some major things or some things that I've been able, been blessed by the Holy Spirit to be able to say that can help unlock a door. Okay, everybody take your right hand, put it in the lock right there, turn it. No, 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 wait. Don't turn it. When you turn it, make the click noise. Ready? Turn it. Ooh. See, how do I know that that opened? Because I heard it. Okay, so, so when you turn it, you're going to hear it. And, and, and then you're going to open some doors. And so what God is going to talk to us about, what he's always helped us to do was just give some key points that can help enhance your life. And tonight we're going we're gonna to spend a little time with a, a, a key point that can help open some doors to your life. Um, and by the way, as long as you live, every day there's a door that needs to be opened. Now here's where you get confused and mess yourself up. Is you, well, I'm through now. I'm through. Honey, that's something on the other side of through. 
Okay, there's something on the other side of you. So there's a there's a key for every day. And so we're going to be talking about it real soon. And there's a there's a wonderful um, calendar that the team has put together that'll help us starting at the end of this year, starting at the beginning of the year, 365 days next year, opening doors. They're called Rick Keys. Everybody say LOL. Okay, so we did. All right. I thought that was pretty brilliant. All right, so Proverbs says in 26.416, a righteous man, boy, this, this key, put it, no, come on, put it in the door, turn it, See, and if you can't say amen, you better say click. Don't you let Satan steal your click. Now, he may have robbed you of your amen, but you shall have what you what? Say, put the lock in there, turn it. You shall have the door open. Now watch this. But this messed me up. This doesn't seem like this should have been in the Bible. But it helped me to understand where I was for a lot of different times in my life as a Christian. The Bible says a righteous man. Now, here's the first thing you're going to be tempted to say. Ain't nobody righteous. And then some of you are really trying to act humble, but you're sounding ignorant. Let me tell you the difference. You, I'm not saying I'm righteous. You, you, what? Let me tell you what it means to be righteous. To be righteous means that you're in right standing with God. How do you get in right standing with God? You accept Jesus as your Savior. Amen. That makes you righteous. Amen. But, 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 but we try to play so humble, we'll tell people, I'm not saying I'm righteous. You better. The Lord died, gave his life. For you to not be? So, I want to talk to those of you who are born again first tonight. And if there are those of you that are listening that are not born again, I want you to understand what you're about to walk into. Ushers, could you please have a seat? And thank you very much. And let's move everybody down to the front. Who does not want to, the water sprinkles to get on them in case of fire? I don't know. I just made that up to see if people are listening. Okay. So, here we go. So, a righteous man, that person who, who has accepted God, that person who has acknowledged in all their ways that God will direct their path. That person who says, okay, God, I am saved. I'm, it's a tough one, but I'm trying to do it. The Bible says that that man or woman does what? Hot dog. It's so <laughs> what a way to walk into Christianity. But a walking kid falls down. Do you remember the first time your baby started to walk and you tried your best to be there every time they would fall to catch them? And finally, you just thought to yourself, look, this kid is wanting to walk more than I'm ready to get out the chair. And this is when you can tell your real lazy parent, the baby just learning how to walk and you saying, come on, the baby way over there. But you, you started out like this, every step, every step. And then when the baby expects you to be there, some of you remember when you walked away and the kid just, <laughs> just sit right down like that. So one of the bad things about a kid learning to walk is watching them fall. But you're so glad that they're walking that eventually in your mind you realize that falling is a part of the process of moving forward. Was that pretty good, Laverne? That's pretty good, wasn't it? That made a lot of sense, didn't it? And no one in here loves your kids so much that you don't want them to walk. Don't you get up. Don't you lay down. <laughs> Mama, I'm 13 now. Lay down. <laughs> no. You want them to get up. You want them to walk. And when they start walking, they're going to walk into stuff, aren't they? They're going to trip over stuff, aren't they? They're going to start bothering your stuff, aren't they? They're going to start eventually running from you, aren't they? Doesn't that sound like what we do with God? <laughs> we start getting into stuff, we start bumping into stuff, then we start running from him. But the Bible says, and tonight we want to talk about this, a righteous man, boy, this is, y'all get this, get, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this. A righteous man fall, and I was okay with falls, but when the Bible talked to me and I saw seven times, the Bible talked to us yesterday about seasons. And for somebody in this room, oh. 
Oh. <laughs> come on, come on. This is the new amen for a minute. It's time to fall again. that I rebuke that <laughs> according to the word you do another fall Ooh, but I'm going to tell you something I hate these falls they bruise you they make you turn on people because you expected somebody to catch you he walked out of my life you were too heavy for him to catch. No, because this time when you fell, you had kids, you had bills, you had two, you had warrants. Do you know there's some stages in your life when you fall, people can't hold you anymore? And this all happens while you're what? Living for the Lord. You're a righteous man. Oh, come on, somebody. I know this is blessing you now. See, you spend a lot of your time finding fault in yourself. And you have to realize that in every stage of your life, it, there's an opportunity for you to fall. Because when you fall, there's an opportunity for God to show you that without him, he, you can't get up. So it's not about how much you fall. It's about how close he is. Now, I didn't say you fall and waddle for a while. You fall. And for some of you, you knew you didn't stay down long. Come on now. But you stayed down long enough to say, Lord, if I ever get up from this one, I won't complain again. If I ever get up from this one, I won't be sassy. If I ever get up from this, I'll watch my mouth. If I ever get up from this, I won't drink another bud or bud light. And I just said bud. I don't know. If I didn't pick your beer, that don't mean you're safe. Ooh, Lord, I thought you were going to say Michelob. But that must be, I, don't, I don't have time to go through all that. Anyway, he, he, he falls down seven times. And, and then here's the cool part. He what? That, that lady in the black poem didn't write Still I Rise that's word you know we, we always say that Still I Rise phenomenon, phenomenon of woman, phenomenon of me whatever you know. so a just man falls but according to the word even if you're down now now, some of y'all not doing it. Come on. And you're going to want to come up here out the church and want some prayer or some gas money. If you would just unlock a door with your mouth. Now, come on. If you've been down, according to the word, it's time for you to what? Get up again. You are due another rise in your life. You do a fall and you do a rise because that's your due season. It was time to fall because without the fall, you can't get up. If this is, don't say nothing, don't say a word, but if this is good to you, turn to your neighbor and unlock something on them. Just click them. Okay, don't touch them. <laughs> Don't say nothing. Don't touch people because you don't know what medicine people own at church. A righteous man falls seven times. I just love this scripture, man. I just love this scripture. And he rises again, but the wicked stumble in time of calamity. People that aren't living for God, when that stuff happens for them, they're down. They're gone. They sell out. They sell out. They don't, they don't, they don't get back because they belong down. The reason you're up is because you belong down up for those who never made our sacrificial Fridays because somebody or something else may be a little bit more important I'm just telling you that's a sacrifice I got to say that though that's not a cold statement we're learning that the way God wants us to praise him it's a matter of us getting up and when it's time to praise God we have to come up so let's talk tonight from this real quick subject everybody say it with me never Never, never give up. That's three nevers. I know how to spell never. But when you down, you don't ever, 
ever, ever think you're going to get up. So when you get up, you say, Lord, I know I will never, never, never. And if, you, if, if you've ever been, I will water this, Lord, as long as I have a job. Because I guarantee you, as soon as these 90 days are over, somebody in here who was just hustling, not trusting, you're going to stop giving. You're going to say, ooh, that's over. Now I can buy me some shoes. And your feet going to fall off. Now, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't literally mean that, but you know what I'm saying. We got a bad understanding. See, some of you are hustling, not trusting. Because what's going to happen in your life in the future mm, is already in your life in seed form. See, if it's going to happen next year, it's already here in seed form. But you'll never see it if you don't water it. I'm a, I'm a. The turn to somebody and say, that's a Rick key. Okay. All right. You just remember that. There are some keys you got you to gotta carry with you all day long. And so we're just talking about that right now. Let me, let me share this with you. Everybody in this room, if, if, if there's not one thing that we all have in common, is every one of us will, will have some, some, the honor of having some setbacks. So I call it an honor because since the word says I'm going to get up, now, now, again, let me tell you this now. See, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my church now tonight. And if those of you that are listening, thank you, brother and sister pastors and everybody. We, we have to have these talks. This stuff is easy, again, to, to preach. It is. It's easy to teach. It really is. And it's easy to holler about. But when you fall... Mm -mm. <clears throat> when it's your baby in the emergency room. So, 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 so here where I am now. Some of us in here, we're smiling and laughing, but somebody right now is smack in the middle of a major suit in court. Smack in the middle of a major surgery that needs to happen. Smack in the middle of a, a major transformation in your life. And, 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 and I'm talking about falling. See, you're down. And I'm here to kind of motivate you and help you. But, but, but it's because I've been there before. But I promise you, it doesn't feel good now. When you're down, it doesn't feel good. He's still good. He still provides. He still opens doors. But when you're down, when you're falling, I'm going to say this. I think some. I think sometimes. I've gotten used to being down because I just don't want to get up and do it no more. Because I know every time you get up, there's a risk of falling again. I, some of you like that. I just don't want to fall. I don't want to like nobody again. I'm, I don't want to go back to school. I don't want to be nice no more. I'm not going back to church again. Why? Because every step you've made in life it, it hurt in another way. And you just didn't want to try again. And that can go from trying to fast to trying to pray. We started a fast year. Some of y'all last, we went seven days. Some of y'all went 17 minutes. <laughs> Pastor, I'm, I'm a, I already messed up. I, I ate a Whataburger. I forgot. I, <laughs> we started fasting. No meats. We just had vegetables, I think fruit. And doggone it, we, we gave up meat and stuff. And Whataburger came out of it, an impossible burger. <laughs> I forgot the thing had bread on it just because it didn't have meat in it, you know. Something that looked like meat. Now, what, what? If I wanted something that looked like meat, I could go to Wendy's. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was. Click. 
But we <laughs> we all have the honor of having some setbacks. And they happen a lot, man. And we all experience those speed bumps in life when we're going real fast. And then there's that bump. You have to slow down all of a sudden. Right? First time you get a driver's license, most beginner speeders don't know that. They're just speeding through and just tear up somebody's car because you don't think the speed bumps work. I went to a neighborhood, y'all, I'm, I'm off the subject. <clears throat> but I went to a neighborhood, I think it was in Frisco or something. I had to do a wedding, and they had speed bumps. These folk had so much money, they speed bumps went in the ground. <laughs> now, I've heard of speed bumps that go like this, but these people, they sink your car. Y'all don't, that's, that don't sound right, does it? Speed bump. But what is this? A hole? <laughs> we got some of those in our neighborhood. They call potholes. <laughs> These people made some potholes. But everybody in life goes through that phase where you go through something and you got to slow down to get over it. And so we all understand that. And, 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 and in this life, it's, 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 there's going to be some suffering. Now, let's see this. Now, suffering is inevitable, but misery is an option. You're going to have to suffer, but you're going to have to decide how long you're going to be miserable. Okay? Right now, right now, there's a key. That's a Rick key right there. Suffering is it? You cannot get through life without having some tough times. But you got to decide how long you're going to stay miserable. I mean, now after a while, everywhere you go, you look pitiful. You start doing stuff to yourself, trying to make yourself look better outside, trying to make yourself be more appealing, and you're just miserable, and you might as well just leave yourself alone because in a minute, it's going to be over, but by the time it's over, you don't even recognize who you are anymore. You done put all kind of tattoos on your body. Ain't nothing wrong with that. If you light enough for them to show up, you got to pay extra charges because you too dark for your tattoo to show up. Now you got to get a white out on your black tattoo. What? 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 I, I don't know what I don't know what I'm talking about. But suffering will change you. But you got to decide how long you're going to be miserable. So some, some people come to church just miserable, just miserable. Because it gives you a lot of attention too. Sometimes when you're going through something, it's all, you like people to say, how you doing? Is it all right? Is it better? You're just so hungry for attention, you just look miserable all the time. Write miserable stuff from miserable notes. Send miserable messages. Of all the stuff God does for you, can't you put something inspiring on your Instagram, on your Snapchat, on your Facebook? Do you have to always act like you ain't got nothing, ain't going to get nothing? That's miserable. And you attract miserable people. And y'all send miserable messages. The gospel is not about being miserable. And thank you somebody for clapping on that. I'm not saying that we haven't been there, but that's not. The gospel is what news? Good news. I tell you why people don't always want to go to church, because when you come here, God gives us good news. And sometimes people just don't want to hear any good news. Click. That's the key. The level of your faith will determine how much good news you can handle. You have to choose. To change for the better. It's, listen, it's just not going to happen. You got to choose it. And that's why one of my favorite scriptures is a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. If the devil is sitting on your roll or in your seat with you, don't talk to anybody else. Talk to the seat and say, don't count me out. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that scripture. I love that scripture. 
I love that scripture. And sometimes that scripture can come at just the right time. Somebody listening to me right now, this happened. This scripture right here hit right now tonight at just the right time. You, you, you needed to hear. So, Pastor, it's just all going crazy. It, it, but, but, baby, that's just for right now. It's just, it's time for your fall. You know, you, you know you've been doing good. Come on now. And you thanked God well when you were doing good. We couldn't even open the door for you. Monday school started at 7. You out here at 4.30. When, when they going to open? I see Brother Darrell walking by the door. <laughs> then when you get your job, you get your finances, you get your little old ride, bust up in your late, they need to hurry up. I watch online. It's all right. But I would sure feel comfortable knowing that every once in a while now, God, I got to keep remembering that I've been through that before. And don't use all that stuff about folk at the church hurting you. That's where you go now. Your new life is surrounded by the church. This is what you do. Do you know sometimes we can get blessed and wish we were back out there where hurt didn't matter? Well, you know it, you're cursing your blessing instead of counting your blessings. Some people have yet to realize that failure is not something that happens when you fall down. Failure is when you refuse to get up again. I'm not going forward. I'm not going back to church. I'm not doing, now you have failed. Before you have fallen, and when you don't want to get up, now you have failed. Did, did, did y'all get that? I, I guess everything coming out of here tonight is a key. But, 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 but falling is natural. Failure ain't part of the plan. See, Satan enjoys watching you fall. He gets excited when you don't get up. God allows you, watch this now. Mm -mm. God allows you to fall, but God will not allow you to fail. Now that could have been louder than that. Come on. See, Lord. Why did you allow me to fall so that I can show you that I'm going to pick you up? Lord, I've been down here for six months, two years. That's because you haven't thanked me. That's because now that so-and-so came along, you don't, you know, yeah, I'll go to church when, when we get through. Get through. You got to stay here for a little bit. Stay here. Failure is not something that happens when you fall down. Just remember that. That's, 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 that happens when you don't. I, just, I'm not, I'm, I refuse to get up. And let me tell you, some people get knocked down. And though they stand up, watch them. Watch them carefully. Though they stand up, you can tell they remain down on the inside where it counts. She, she finally back. Watch this. He's finally back, but watch him. Watch how they come back when they look. You see, even though somebody's up outside, doesn't mean that they're up inside. And that's when it counts. That's where it counts. I can fake being up. I've done it before. I've had to fake it till I make it. I had the devil forgetting that he attacked me. I, I've, I know I've been the reasons for some demons being fired. I thought I told y'all to hit him. I thought I told y'all to hurt him. I thought I told you to discredit him. Lord, we did. But every time we got close, that fool rolled back over, threw up his hands in the house by himself. We can't keep him down. And the devil said, y'all fired.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. I don't have to ask for that, amen. That's yours by yourself. Some folk are still amazed that you back up again. Yeah. And you look like you're by yourself, but he's just propping you up right now because that's where it counts on the inside. You got to pull your spirit up again. Pull your spirit up again. Set your sights high. Get yourself back up where you're supposed to be. Listen, the game is not over yet. It's not over. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Those fools are celebrating and you're reloading. Click. Some people are throwing a party and you're mad because you're not invited because they were going to have you for dinner. Don't show up. You can do so much more. It's not over yet. He's still able. Even when you're not ready, God is still able. Sometimes I say, God, I'm, I, don't, I can't. He said, I know, but I can. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. You know, and I'm just telling you, when you're talking to your daddy, you can talk like that. If he's your father, you can say to him, Lord, I can't. And that sometimes is what God's been waiting to hear. You can't. And when you can't, he said, now, watch me. I know that blessed somebody. I know that just blessed somebody. Sure, it blessed me. All these people in the Bible we talk about David. Y'all remember David? We talk about David all the time. David, David stumbled, but he got back up again. God made him Israel's king. Greatest, greatest king they ever had. Jacob stumbled, but he got back up again and became the father of 12 tribes of Israel. Paul Tried to just annihilate the Christians, talk bad about them. You know, you're going to have folks that's going to do that. That's going to happen to all of us. There are some folks that are going to hate you. But God took hold of that guy's life and used him to, to bring tons of people into Christianity. Peter denied the Lord in his time of his greatest need. Golly, Jesus really needed his tight buddy, man. But Peter got back up. Shook off the shame, and God used him to spread the gospel. I want to talk about Peter in just a minute. I want to talk about Peter again because sometimes there are people that are set up to set you free. But temptation from wanting to be popular with everybody else will crucify you. The need for hunger and attention will cause you to kill someone else's faith. But before I tell that story, let me tell you another story. Back in 1929, some of y'all remember this. It's always somebody in church. Yeah, yeah, say it, say it. I, don't know what it I just thought I'd beat you to it. 1929, <laughs> there was a Rose Bowl. Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets. They played California Bears. There was a young boy by the name of Roy Regal. And, and he learned a very less, very valuable lesson in that game. A very valuable lesson, very valuable lesson. I would call it in the game of life, not just football. Late in the first half, Georgia Tech was, they had a running back by the name of Stumpy Thomason. And Stumpy Thomason was running the ball and he fumbled the ball. And everybody's jumping around for the ball, and 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 and, and the California linemen. Um, this was uh, this is this is 1929. There's another story about it happening. Minnesota. What's that guy's name? But anyway, we'll talk about it. But California lineman Roy Regal. He recovered the ball and went toward his own end zone, and he was he was determined. He was running, but determined to score. He was running, running, and he heard all the people yelling and the t players yelling because he had picked up the fumble and he was running. But it was only one problem. That, that boy was going to the wrong goal. <laughs> I, I want to say that some of you are running full speed. 
in the wrong direction. But you're so homely, so lonely, so depressed, so eager for some friendship. You, you running, you finally got something. But you're going in the wrong direction with it. Can I get a witness in the house? Okay. And so he's running. And, and, and so he, one of his own players caught up with him and, and tackled him on the three-yard line. Now that boy go, look. He going the wrong way. And one of his own players just pulled him down. Hey, hey, tackle him on the <laughs> tackle him on the three. I just love. Give our audio team a hand. I didn't know they were gonna pull that up. Way to go, brother David and the crew. Hey, Amen. If I if I'd known they were gonna have that picture, that I'd have slowed that sermon down. I'd have I'd have hooped that right there. But anyway, glad I wasn't lying, boy. They done went and looked it up. Good Lord. But anyway, the other team scored and they eventually lost. But this was, but it was at halftime, right? So at halftime, the, the, the team get, they all gathered in the locker room and, and, and no one said a word. They just kind of sitting there listening. And so finally, Coach Nibs was, 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 came up to speak to his team. His name was Coach Nibs. Nibs Price was his name. And he spoke and said, okay, that's the first half. And so we're going out the second half. We're going to have the same starting lineup. Everybody, if it just came out, you go right back in. And so everybody headed out. They ready to cheer, get ready for the next half, except Roy. Roy Regals is sitting there on the bench, and he's got his head in his hands. Coach went over, you heard me, Roy, let's go, let's go, let's go. I said the same team that came out of the first half is going to start the second half. And Roy, that includes you. Let's get up, let's move it. And Roy looked at him and said, Coach, I can't go out there again. I can't face my teammates. I can't face the crowds. People are laughing. I let you down. I shame the team. I'm embarrassed and I embarrassed our school and I just can't go back out there anymore. I know this is somebody in here because you were doing so good at church. You had a slip up. You even had a few people that made you think you were doing all right. And by the time you put your mouth on everybody in church, by the time you said something wrong about the ministry and the time you did it, you realized you were just halfway through it. And God still said, I can, I can still use you. But anyway, coach straightened the boy up, looked him right in the eyes and said, listen, the game is only half over. You get out there and make something of yourself. The game's only half over. And that went down as one of the greatest Rose Bowls in history. And um, they didn't win that game, but there were a lot more mistakes than just that one. And when I look at that story, and I was kind of going over it and thinking about it. And I read a lot of little things like that. And uh, I don't realize, I guess, the power of what people do on YouTube. And that was pretty good. But this guy was a great coach. And when I think about him, I think about the way the Lord sees us. This guy didn't change the guy because he made a mistake. Because he constantly believed in him. And that's how God is with us. You know how many times we've run the wrong way? You know how many things that came out of our mouth that cost the whole church some grief? You know how many times we picked up a fumble and when we should have been using it against the enemy, we used it against the church? And what did God say? I'll pick you back up. I'll give you another chance. Everybody in this room, everybody in this room, we stumble. And a lot of us have often run the wrong way. And I don't, I don't even have to ask for a witness on that. You've stumbled. And you've run the wrong way. Have you ever said something that you wish you could have taken back? Or you wish you couldn't have said it to somebody you said it to? 
And they ran with it. The wrong way. God gave us another chance. There are going to be a lot of fumbles and a lot of moves on the fields of life that we run. But still, God's going to be able to prop you when nobody else sees you sitting down on the bench. The bench could be in your own tub. The bench could be on your own side of your own bed. The bench could be sitting in the garage. Maybe the bench has been for a lot of people, a gun almost pointed to their head, hanging over the side of a bridge, pills in their hands, liquor in their hands, drugs in their possession. And God says, I still need you the second half. <laughs> And you're going like, me, God? Yeah. I, I, I know you had three abortions the first half. You shot two people. You murdered somebody. You danced naked on the table the first half. You got drunk. You cussed your mama out. You spent 20 years of your life in jail. But that's the first half. And God says, but here's what I'll do. I'll pick you up. Because the only reason that you were in the game was because I believed in you. Now, sometimes you got to look at it like this, Billy. You got one God believing in you, but you got 11 people on the field trying to kill you. It's pretty cool, isn't it? For me, it's kind of rough. You got one God that's believing in you, and sometimes you have two or 3,000 people trying to tackle you. And I don't know about you, but I've gotten up sometimes and go, oh, God, that's it. And God said, oh, by the way, you got to go back tomorrow. Monday? God, I just got through it now. I know. So if you look at your life right now and just cut it in half, just whoosh, and you look back at this half and all the craziness that happened, Oh, you got those children now and you love them. You got that degree now and you love it. You got all that stuff and you love it. But boy, but if you could have just, no, God, I don't, I may not even, this. and I'm, I'm way past this lustful thing y'all loving. It's, what? You are the seedbed of hate. And the enemy knew that he could use that to kill you. And when you found yourself waddling, and now here you are. Come on. You, you don't have to say a word on this one. You can keep, matter of fact, let's keep real quiet. But who would have ever thought that someone like you would be buckled into a church on a Monday night? This is the first few hours past your hangover and you went to work on this side. No, you, you missed that. This is the first half of your, of your hangover from the weekend in your old life and with your head in the toilet puking up trying to take a pregnancy test that you couldn't even afford trying to figure out Lord whose is this where am I why am I on these streets and God whispered in your ear hey I believe in you because you still got another half to go and you never thought at being 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 years old. <laughs> After you fumbled or ran the wrong way the first half. I know I'm talking to somebody in here, good Lord. After you ran the wrong way the first half. God says, I believe in you. You go, why God? He said, because you trusted me, you tried me, you accepted me as your savior. And I needed you to know that during this game of life, you're going to fall down several times. But you'll get up. Because I believe in you. You felt like you were doing a good thing. You just couldn't see up the road. That's that guy I talked about earlier. We don't have any YouTube on him. His name is Peter. I want to go real slow with this story because I'm going to bring the message to a conclusion at the end of this about 1030. 
just trying to see if you're listening. <laughs> Peter had a history of fumbling. Y'all, let's walk through his story for a minute. And I probably want to go into a little bit more detail about it Sunday. I, I always say that, though, don't I? God just changes it and puts us on point. But, but, but Peter, pardon all the clicking. That's not any team. That's just Mike's about worn out now. I'll get another one. That's my fault. Um, but Peter had a history of fumbles. And I want you to hear this. Now, I want to I wanna tell this story all over this room. I want to run. I want to holler because this is hard for me to tell. But I want to talk, simple talk to somebody who's fumbling right now. <laughs> and, and you really don't want to hear this. But God is saying, sister, stop trying to recover in the arms of the wrong man. Brother, stop trying to recover in the arms of the wrong woman. I got you. I believe in you. The game's not over. Present another value to people. That stuff worked the first half of your life. It don't work like that the second half. Peter fumbled. Can I go on? You'll forgive me if I just stay here for a second, right? But the biggest mistake that Peter made was on the last night of Jesus' life. I want a teenager to be able to rec kind of re reminisce on this and Maybe, Candace, we can kind of work up with our fine arts troupe how we can kind of display this maybe on a Sunday morning, and I'll go back and reteach it if we can just do about a five-minute segment to paint the picture. So the last few hours of Peter's life, he had sworn how loyal he would be to God. You ever met that person? You'll meet him. I love you no matter what. You'll meet him. If you're a guy, you'll hear a girl say that. I love you no matter what. If you're a guy, you may hear another guy say that. I love you no matter what. You take that key. Uh-uh. Like that. He had sworn his loyalty to him. When Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter, who said, I would never do like, I would never be like the rest of these, Peter ran in the wrong direction. He didn't run toward the end zone. He ran toward the devil's end zone. Now, I don't know you, so don't go saying, Pastor, pull no shade. And quit being so common with the gospel, by the way, some of you. This ain't shade. This is fruit. There's a difference. Receive that God is speaking to your heart to say, hey, I got you now. And stop taking things in church as always. Oh, you didn't have to say that. Okay, so he ran. Peter ran in the wrong direction. And that same night as Jesus was on trial, Peter denied him, not one time, but three times. That's somebody saying to you, so y'all friends? No. But, I, but, but you went to their church. I, ain't, I don't know them. But, but you were in a part of the team. You, you, you got me bent. <laughs> I bet you Peter blamed himself for Jesus' death. And I bet he said something like, man, if I could have done so, I could have stopped Judas and none of this would have happened. I'm a terrible leader. I'm, I'm just not a good man. And Jesus even said that Simon, Satan was after you to sift you not. He told me all this that I would deny him. And I, I told him no. And, 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 and he tried to tell me, but I was so into being so right, I, I, I failed him. And Peter felt so disqualified, church, from ministry that he traded his shepherd's staff for a fishing pole. And he went back to the lake. Remember, this is the same Peter that was the guy with the net. I'm just giving you an abbreviation. And so he, you can have so much going for you that before you know it, you used to use the net. And before you realize it, now you're back to the pole. I know I'm talking to some pole people in here now. Yeah, you, you used to have it all. 
but you start putting your stuff out there in the world and the world told you, we got you. Now you're back to a pole. And, and just a warning, just a warning. Watch what you have start to dis... Because you may be setting yourself up for another fall. Yeah, come on. Your car is sexy. Your house is sexy. Your career is sexy. Your look is sexy. You work for what they see. But you haven't built up your inside. And now you're back to a pole. And that's where Peter was. He knew God called him to minister. But his failure drove him away from that calling. Then the whole story changes. Am I going slow enough for you to get it? Y'all sure? Okay. So the whole story changes now. So Peter and his friends come back from a night of fishing. And Jesus stood on the lake. And he told his disciples to come to him. And when Peter recognized that it was Jesus, he left the other people. He left them quick and, and swam to the shore. And so now he's, he's leaving them. Y'all, that's him. That's him. That's him. I, I, I know it's him. He's called me before. I know his voice. I saw him in a storm. And so Peter at this point could do just like you and go, I'm too ashamed to face him. I know I betrayed him. I know that I acted like I didn't know him. I know because I was around my, all my other friends because see, Peter's old friends were around this fire and they're the ones that persuaded him to act like he didn't know it because sometimes after you get saved, you go back to your friends in the world and they go, girl, what you doing out here drinking with us? You know you don't party like that. Oh, I ain't doing like that. My pal's saying out here, ain't nobody here from my church. I don't care what they say. I just, uh, and, then, and, then, uh. and you're running in the wrong direction. So Peter got with his friends. And his friends influenced him to do that. But now there's Jesus. And he runs to Jesus. And I hope you feel the sincerity in my heart with this story. And I'm, I'm really, I'm having to stay right here for I don't know who, but I'm here. And so he had to face, come face to face with the one that he had completely failed. And I bet you all of us in this room kind of know what that feels like because I guarantee you every one of us in this room have so many times or at some time or another we've turned our back on God and how many times have you really denied him? I mean really denied him, refusing that you're going to trust him just so you can blend in with the crowd. Okay, are you going back to church? No, I ain't fooling with them women. You going back to church? Game is on. That one they, uh, uh, you denied him. <laughs> Your God been good to me. Where you get that car from? Not this friend hooked me up. You lying. God picked you up with your no credit, no down payment having, no license, no qualification, no driving, no s keeping the road straight into this, 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 this. And when you had a chance to tell him, God picked me up. You did just like Peter, you denied him. You were running the wrong way. And so now here comes Peter. Here comes Peter, man. Here he comes. He left these boys now. He left them before, remember? There were some storms and something. So he left these boys now. And he's going with Jesus. And here's where it starts to hurt a little bit. Never, never, never give up. It says in John 21, 15. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of John, do, do you love me? Now, I don't know if this, you know, it could have been like 30 minutes later, you know, after they played some Monopoly and checkers, you know, 
Could have been some minutes in between, some, some hours in between, but he asked him a second time. You know that makes you uncomfortable. You love me. Girl, you know I love you. Y'all see them eating some pork chops, neck bone, green. Commercial come on TV. You love me. I told you, hey, look. <laughs> Do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. You, you know I love you. And he said to him, uh, 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 shepherd my sheep. Then he said to him the third time, see, you know, you know, game on all night and, and almost every quarter. Now she's going to turn to the fourth quarter. Um. You enjoying this game? Yeah, it's a good game. You love me. You trying to start something. You trying to start something. You, you, you know I'm loving you. I could have been out there watching with what you call now. I'm over here. If you want me to leave, just say so. Don't, you ain't got to pick no fight. Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You, you know, fool. I know you know. And uh, you know I love you. Then Jesus said, tend my sheep. Now let me tell you why I said this. And why I have to be so careful with this story tonight. This is Monday school. You have a lot of things going on in your life. Ain't nobody in this room without. Ain't nobody in this room. There's no one in this room. Please pardon my broken English here. But ain't nobody in this room. They ain't got nothing to do tomorrow. <laughs> Forgive all that broken English. Every one of you in this room are important. And sometimes when you break away from what you were going to do to say, Lord, I know the first half, I wouldn't have done this. See, what this Monday school represents to a lot of people, these sacrificial Fridays that some of you may complain about, I don't know what we're trying to do, whatever God's doing. God is saying, this is about your second half. See, in the first half of your life, remember when you snuck out of your mama's house to be with somebody who would never be there for you the second half? See, the second half now, you ain't got to sneak away from nobody. You ain't got to sit up in church and text nobody. I'm at church. Don't bother me. He, he or she ought to know. <laughs> Thanksgiving morning, we got a little thing going on around here. We going to Jerry's house or God's house. I guarantee you, if somebody gave you a ticket <clears throat> and the game was at church time, you would go to that game. That game going to last a whole lot longer than church. But the first part of your life, you ran that way. Second half, you got to say, no, I know how I got here. I'm still looking for me a $90 million contract. That might have been a little shade right there, though. So I'm always amazed at the answers. That God gave Peter. Because if it were me, I would have said, you joker. You joker. Why did you leave me like that? I told you, man, Satan was going to be after you. Now, nah, you wanted to be so popular. You wanted so many likes. You denied me. They asked you if you went to Ibach and you said no. I'm thinking about changing. That's what Peter did. In front of people, all you had to say was, yeah, I'm a member. Because, see, with your hookup, because the world loved Peter, with your hookup, they would have given Jesus, cut him some slack. No, you sold him out. You loved him when he let you walk on water. But when you had to walk... See, that's what I would have said. But this is not me, right? I would have said, you joker, now I'm going to turn you into a frog. Just like that. I would have confronted how poor he was. But I'm going to give you a key. Let's go. Here. Come on. Come on. Uh, 
Now, don't you see the difference? Come on. Because if you, if you came out on this Friday night knowing it was going to be dark early and you could have been in your bed, you deserve, here, take, you deserve this one. Jesus didn't confront his performance. He confronted his heart. I would have said, you let me down. Jesus said, I still need you. I'm just letting you write that down. Peter, do you love me? Lord, I do love you. He confronted his heart. You ever had somebody to cuss you out that told you they love you? That's performance based. I love you. I can't come over there right now. I'm forget you with your bald head, you and your mom. It's the same thing. You ever thought that your words might change somebody's heart if you just? Why do people lie about feeling good? Because they know that most people in your life only love you because of your performance. And if you're not good, they'll find someone better. So we lie about being good so that we won't be held accountable for being at, not at our best. Sometimes people come into your life when you're down. They don't know you've been down before. You're used to getting back up. But when you can't do, they have no idea of how to deal with you because you're just trying to be. Click, click, click. So let's finish this. Jesus didn't confront his performance because you know you and I would have. Oh, ooh, when, and ooh, if I see you again, Peter. Some of us would have been plotting it in, in the grave plotting it. First person I'm going after is Peter. <laughs> you, know, you wouldn't even been able to do what the Lord, you wouldn't even be able to rest them three days. Mm, mm, mm. In your grave, biting your nails. I'm a, first, I'm going <clears throat> to choke him on some fish. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that net and put it, that fish is the man. I'm going to wrap it all around him. You know you would have. But Jesus doesn't do that to any of you in here. He didn't confront his performance. I want that to sink in. He went after his heart. Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Okay. Get back in the game. It's not over yet. Get back in the game. It's not over yet. Lord, I'm going to start the second half. You're going to start the second. Lord, I got four interceptions the first half. But I still need you the second half. The, the, those interceptions you threw, that were somebody else's fault, blah, 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 blah. But I need you the second half. I want to talk. I want to talk for the next 13 minutes to the second half pe people of IBOC. Some of you did good the first half. But the first half was just so that you could be strong enough to bring in the second half. If you're tired now, then you ought to be testifying that God can restore you. Because somebody on day two needs to see what 65 looks like. The prerequisite for restoration is not performance, it's love. What's required before you really help somebody back on their feet is not how good they perform or what they have, but it's how much love you have. Because you might have to give up a couple hundred dollars just to help them get off their feet, get off their back. They can't perform. <clears throat> they can't pay you back. They can't do anything. They don't have anything. But you have all, you have love. That's the church. Sometimes people come in church and go, 
I, I, you know, I kind of see a different kind of people in church. What you're seeing are people who need to be restored. I'm so glad that God has not made us class sensitive. Let me tell you what that means. See, there are more professional people in here than you realize, except we realize at the back door, we can take off this hat. Yet some of you are so excited about trying to be something that you're not yet that you'd rather mix in with a group of people who will never be what they're pretending to be. At least you got to jump at knowing you still got something to do. Can anybody hear me? Love will always be God's highest test. And so don't put a magnifying glass on, there, on your failure. I like that. That's what, I, I've done that before. I've made what I did wrong so big that it was bigger than where I was trying to go. Because don't you know, sometimes our failures can look real huge. You ever, anybody ever notice that? And, you, and it feels like everybody knows, and it's not even a failure. It's just a step. But what makes it bad is when your Peters say things that have nothing to do with your destiny, but it has everything to do with their performance. Because now, man, they know. They know Peter, Peter, if Peter said he wasn't Jesus, if Peter said he wasn't it, he must, it must, we got to crucify him. This joke has been fooling everybody. He told Peter, I need you. I need you to start the church. Peter said, you are the Christ. So we know Peter knew him. But when the pressure came on, no, nah, dog, I don't go to his church. <laughs> nah, I, I mean, I've seen him a couple of times, but I don't really know him. Or Peter did, did like a lot of us do. <laughs> you think you know him. Honey, I know some stuff. There you go. <laughs> and once you have an audience, the rooster crows, get ready for your pole. You do a fall. Why do you have to fall? Because now God's got to show you the very people that you condemned are the ones that are going to have to love you back. Because if they didn't qualify to fall, they don't qualify to be restored. And love lifted me when nothing else could work. So here's how we close this. Where, where you, is he shouting? What's, what's going on? <laughs> Put a seatbelt on him. Yeah. One of the most powerful ingredients for staying powerful is the ability to get back and stay in the game. But one of the greatest ingredients, and I'm going to say this, you're going to think, Pastor, you couldn't be right. I'm going to say it because this is, this is just a key now. Don't look this up anywhere. You won't ever find this anywhere. One of the greatest ingredients for getting back on your feet is stubbornness. Now, I know some of you got stubbornness from your mama, got stubbornness from your daddy, stubbornness from your grandma, stubborn running your family. You, you, you so mean, you'll stop and argue with a red light. Just. But I'm talking about plain old stubbornness. See, to me, you can be stubborn in the right way. I promise you there are people that don't have, that don't get why you're here. But you're so stubborn you, that you're going again tonight. You might, you might about to stay at home but because they said that you went yeah I sure am <laughs> drove over three red lights a couple of bumps <laughs> on an empty tank of gas I thought you didn't have any gas I don't <laughs> but you are so stubborn in the right way that I call it endurance there's something called a stubborn endurance I can't win, but because I can't let you win, <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> Stubborn endurance. That's that thing that makes you raise your hand when you brought somebody else to church and they got their arms folded. 
Now you got to decide, am I going to pee to Jesus or am I going to serve Jesus? Get your arm off my shoulder, boo. Not, not here. Just, I got to put these both up from him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You want to know what I've been doing tonight, boo? You got about two hours? Let me give you some word. Stubborn. Stubborn. Endurance. That's the ingredients. That's the main ingredient for staying powerful. You got to be stubborn. Never, 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 never give up. How can you never? Ne you got to be stubborn. Have you ever tried to get somebody to talk to you that don't want to talk? Um, tell me what's on your mind. I don't want to talk about it. No, tell me what's wrong. Nothing. I'm talking about the house on fire. Come on, let's go. You go. I've been through hell before. Stubborn. I mean, y'all, y'all know, y'all, y'all men the stubborn people. Why you gonna do this to me? You can slap me all you want to. Stubborn. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. But I've learned some stuff from some stubborn people. I kind of like that because if you can ever transfer that over into the kingdom. No, when you have stubborn endurance so that nothing can persuade you to I don't care how tough it is. I'm going to church if I don't go nowhere else. Do you know Satan gets sick of that? Oh, come on now. Can't nobody kill the church that much. Don't nobody need God like that. You're going to give God something every day. What are we supposed to do? Stubborn, stubborn. But you're enduring. You're enduring. You're enduring. You're enduring. They're still tripping at how you're making it. You still don't have a degree. You still don't have any qualifications. You still don't have credit. But you still got everything you need because you stayed consistent. That's what's going to help you make it through when those critics keep nagging you and the things from your past keep coming back into your mind. I know God called me to represent him during ministry and God calls you in his room to do the same thing. A whole lot of us in here. But I got to finish my course. You're sick. Your body's aching with pain. Why are you going? I'm stubborn. I'm going to have to endure because the race that I'm in is not given to the swift. I've seen some people a lot faster than me not make it across. It's not given to the strong. I know some people, all they do is work on their muscles, work on their bodies, and they ain't can't last 15 more minutes. But this race is given to the one who can endure. Be stubborn. Stubborn! One of the keys, come on, click, is stubbornness. That ain't positive. Okay, put it in, click it again, click, click it again, click, click it again, click. That's called endurance. He'll never leave me, nor forsake me. Therefore, I'm going to be consistent. Pastor so-and-so not going to be able to make it tonight. This show, that don't stop nothing. My first congregation was some dogs and cats. I just preached the bugs. It didn't matter to me. And I guess I want you to know you're in good company because that's how Jesus was. He stayed the course. And this is the last scripture. Okay? We call our stubborn endurance. It's the last scripture. I'm going to show you how it's the last one. See, because we're back at the beginning. See, this is the last one right there. We ain't got nowhere else to go. Back there. Back there. We're going to end with that right there. But we'll go back here. Okay. Because some of y'all say, he said that before. I don't know. That's the last one. Now, I may stay on there for two hours, but that's the last one. <laughs> no, let me just show you real quick. I hope you got your smile back. I want you to, you know, 
It's hard for me to smile sometimes, but I always smile because I'm, I'm just stubborn. I don't, I'm not always, watch this, let me say this. I'm not always happy when I smile. Things hurt me. But I'm so stubborn that I don't, I don't want to always look like what I'm going through. Just like, you know. I'm going I'm to say this. That's why I love watching my sisters because that's what I love about the new wig phase that's in. Because someday you just feel nappy, but you ain't got to look nappy. You know, I'm serious. You know, y'all just, I, you just, and somebody will compliment you. You know, you look cute. You're like, well, for real? Right? Right? Because you just refuse to look down because you're going to a down moment. And I'm going to just say this too. For some of you, maybe you ought to show somebody though that I can still come out if I'm not up. Because you got to always have everything right, every piece of lipstick right, every piece of... Mm, 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 mm. Somebody needs to know, look baby, today, it ain't all together. But I'm so stubborn, I ain't going to stay in the back. I'm going forward. Do y'all get this yet? Is this blessing anybody? So, 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 let me show you why I have this scripture here because there is a, a prophecy is when something happens in the Bible and it shows you who Jesus is going to be so that when the other people come along and say they're the Messiah, you see all these fakes. So it was prophesied. When I talk to you about being um, in good company and, and, and being with endurance, you're in good company if you're an endurer. You're in good company if you're stubborn because it was like Jesus. So they announced him before he came. They said, when he gets here, you'll notice now, he will not be disheartened. Okay? He won't be easily beat up and made to give up. He will not be. Or crushed. He will not go down until he's established justice in the earth. Now, what did that mean? He's got to pay for our sins. And once he dies on the cross, then it is finished. And you'll notice that's him because what's going to happen to most people is when they put under pressure, they'll quit because when enough people in the world turn on them, say things about them, and you look up and you go, man, my whole um, fan base, I'll use that word, my whole fan base, my whole like, thing, everybody's saying stuff. See, we can't handle just so much of it. But once you understand that you're in good company, Because it happens with him first. And he said in his word that if they hate you, they hated me first. So some of us can't stand to be this light because you don't know where your strength comes from. And so tonight we have a very, very powerful lesson here in this Monday school. Then we have to never, never, never. I don't know, you know, I don't know why we have to put the African sister right there like she liked that though. We could, <laughs> she just looked like I, I, I ain't going I ain't. but I just wanted to take this moment tonight because somebody here you you needed to hey you fumbled the first half so stop walking this half of your life like you didn't get picked up God drafted you let me tell you he drafted you before you ever accomplished anything when God drafted you, you were no good. And he helped you get it right. And some of you started smelling yourself. And he had to take away your sense of smell. And that's what made you get angry. I usually could see things. They were slick. No, they weren't. You're operating by your senses and not your faith. And just remember, you, you can't get... Everything evaluated by its performance. Use your heart. Use your love. And we're going to be here a long, long time. Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.